Good evening, class. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Welcome to uh, uh, business analysis stage of this uh, program. We just uh, concluded our training on um, project management and um, starting business uh, analysis, which will take us two weeks to complete. So our timeline in this uh, training is two weeks, and then we start our work placement. So without wasting time, we'll go straight to the business of the day by pulling our slide. So, uh, this is, uh, the table of content for for this um um business analysis. We need to look at. Um, We've uh, done the introduction, general introduction, and um, today we are going to look at introduction to business analysis. We're going to look at um, a case study in business analysis. We are starting after introduction, we are starting with a case study to help to, to give us the picture of what business analysis is like. So you understand it in real life, not by uh, definition or by description. You look at how it works. So that's why we are uh, putting this uh, case study. Then after then we'll look at rules in business analysis and uh, look at um, stakeholders in business analysis, we'll look at skills in business analysis. Uh, these are things we are planning to cover if possible today, but let's see how much we can cover but looking at the whole table of content, we have um, a business analysis core concept model. Then uh, we have a business requirement. We have a business analysis techniques, business analysis tools, project methodology through um, a framework in, in this business analysis. We look at software development life cycle. Uh, look at a project management life cycle. And then we conclude the, the training. You have a project um, software development life cycle and a project management life cycle. They are two different things. Um, the, the, the software development life cycle is part of project management life cycle. Like uh, in project management, we treated project management life cycle. But here we are going to treat both software development life cycle and project management life cycle. So let's get started with uh, the introduction of um, business analysis. Yeah. We've done the general introduction, so we move to a business analysis definition and the importance in the market. So what is business analysis? According to uh, international 
Institute of Business Analysis, that is IIBA, this uh, body is the highest recognized body that uh, governs the best practice in business analysis. So their certification in business analysis is regarded as the highest certification. It's an international body. It's not, um, it's not by country, it's globally recognized. So whatever we are doing here, we are drawing reference from this uh, body and they have um, uh, a, 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 a body of knowledge which they produce uh, the, that is regarded as the best practice in business analysis, analysis called the um, business analysis body of knowledge. And so that is what we are using for this um, training. And we believe is the best, best uh, authority uh, in business uh, analysis. There are so many body, so many authorities, so many textbooks, knowledge uh, institutes uh, in business analysis. But this global body is regarded as the highest body. So if you have any certification from uh, this body, it's highly recognized. Is even more recognized than a university a certificate when it comes to um, industries and business analysis. So according to this body, business analysis is the practice of enabling change in an enterprise by defining needs and recommending solutions that deliver value to stakeholders. Business analysis enables an enterprise to articulate needs and the rationale for change and to design and describe solutions that can deliver value. So business analysis is all about solving problems, bringing changes, creating solutions, so that is what business analysis is all about. So as a business analyst, you are a change agent. You are a solution architect. That is what you are. So if you are joining organization as a business analyst, they are seeing you, they are seeing you as a messiah that is coming to solve their problems. So that is um, that's why business analysis is a is a highly recognized um, subject in the industry. And the best part of business analysis is that um, business analysis is not tied to any industry. So if you are a business analyst, you you, you are not tied to anywhere. You can't say you are. You are, a, you, are, you are tied in the banking sector or telecommunication or health sector or oil and gas or public sectors or logistics. So as a business analyst, you can work anywhere you can think of because all these organizations you are seeing are mentioned all these industries they're always having one problem or the other. It's either they are, they are trying to compete with, within the industry by you know, adopting one solution, one technology, improving on one technology, updating on one technology, migrating from one solution to another solution. So that is, and they can't do it. They don't know how to do it. So they are relying on your expert knowledge to guide them to move from one solution to the other solution in order to remain uh, competitive in the market. So the need for business analysis will continue to rise, just like the need 
or project manager. Because when there is a, a solution, when there is a problem, the next thing is to, to look for solution. And to look for solution, they are looking for business analysts. And for a business analyst to solve this solution, it has to be a project. And to do that, someone needs to lead that project, and that person is the project manager. So that's why you see we're trying to carry business analysis and the project manager together, because they go hand in hand. And the beauty of it, the beauty of business analysis is that a business analyst is a project manager. That's one thing I want you to know. A project manager might not be a business analyst. You can be a project manager without being a business analyst. But a good business analyst, you are a project, you are automatically a project manager. As a business analyst, you should be able to handle a project on your own without any other project manager. But in big companies, you try to have a, a kind of a division of labor where they have want um, they don't want to over labor one person or one um, rule. So that's why I have all these rules to make sure that everything moves fast. So that is um, what business analysis is all about. It's all about changing. Creating solution. You can see these days, companies used to, many companies used to operate on premises. Most of their solutions used to be on premises. When uh, you have, uh, let me say, um, some of these accounting softwares, it used to be on premises. Once you can um, <clears throat> install the, the solution, on your server within the company, that is it. But these days, companies don't operate on premises anymore. Most companies are moving to the cloud. <clears throat> and to do that, you need a business analyst that will look at the requirements for your company to be on the cloud successfully. And they successfully migrate your data from on-premise to the cloud. That's business analysis. What we are doing here is the work of business analysis. Before, it's not easy to, to teach your students uh, on the cloud. But these days, we are doing it. What I'm doing here is uh, we, are, we, are, we, are work, we are working remotely, teaching people on the cloud. And you can see how, how smooth, how effective. For instance, if some of you that are working, if you are, if you are doing your, uh, uh, maybe part-time program or something like that, when you finish school, you check how you go to, to the university for your program to, to have your lectures and do all this and that. This is very, very difficult for you. Don't even think of doing it because you can't try it after closing work by five o'clock. Then you come back home. How do you even weekends? It's not fine that. But these days, you can just come back from work, freshen up, and join a class within a few few hours. You are done, and you go to bed. That's technologies, and these are. Uh, what business analysts are doing, creating solutions, changes. And you can see that it's becoming a trend. So, so many organizations, so many universities, if they really want to be in the market, they will have to start adopting this remote way of um, teaching. And to do that, they will need to look for good business analysts that will help them to look for the best solution that will help them um, to get on the cloud. 
So this, I'm just using this scenario to, to let you or uh, teach you the, uh, highlight the importance of how business analysis work. That is, is, uh, is an everyday thing in our society or in, in the organization. Looking at the way um, technologies are moving these days, you're looking at uh, artificial intelligence, you are looking at uh, machine learning, all these all these powerful powerful technologies are driving changes that companies are always competing so this world business analyst this is what we do we help to make all these things um become possible so we affect changes in the uh, organization so that's what we do. Now you've uh, uh, understand or uh, painted the picture of what business analysis is um, all about. So let's look at uh, why it's um, uh, so important. Business analysis is an agent of change as they introduce manage and they facilitate necessary changes for your business model collaborate with stakeholders by by collaborate collaborating with stakeholders business analysts reduce reward and uh, on projects so as a business analyst, you collaborate with stakeholders all the time. This is one of the um, major uh, quality of business analysis or business analysis. You must be able to, to know how to collaborate with stakeholders to, to determine requirements for any project. That's why whenever you are starting a project, the first thing you need to do as a business analyst is facilitate um, requirement gathering. Requirement gathering means collaborating with your stakeholders to understand the, the stakeholders need, the business need, to understand the problem statement, and then to understand the kind of solution you need to collaborate with stakeholders. And during collaboration, you tend to understand the actual requirements. And with your expert knowledge as a business analyst, after doing that, you give them the exact solution they are looking for. And this is no longer going to be an um, assumption because you are a professional. And this will re reduce the the, the company or the organization uh, reworking on projects, maybe the project didn't miss specification because as a business analyst, you are a professional. Once you get a requirement and do your analysis, it's going to be very difficult to have a rework after you must have completed your project. So business analysts help company to lower their costs. The business analysts reduce Projects rework on that life um, uh, functionalities and requirements churn. They also identify and implement more cost effective solution. It's just a continuation of the collaboration with the stakeholders. So you, you reduce costs for the company when you do thorough. Um, requirement analysis and uh, come up with a solution. It's going to be difficult to do a rework and you help company to implement the best solution within the budgets they have, making it uh, cost effective for them. So because there, is, there are so many solutions out there. All you need to know is that all you need is to understand the, the company budget. With your company budget, you should be able as a business analyst to optimize 
um, the solution within the budget and give them the best out of uh, out of their budget, thereby reducing the cost of uh, uh, operation or implementation. As a business analyst, you increase the return on the investment. This, uh, this is where you increase the, 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 the benefits from the investment. And to do that, it's all about uh, reducing cost of implementation. So these are the, the, the way business analysts um, that, uh, um, help company to increase the return on investment. For instance, if you, are, if, you, if you are joining a company, one way you can reduce the uh, increase um, uh, return on investment is not only by increasing revenues. You can equally help them by using um, lean method to reduce waste in the organization. And when you are reducing waste within the, the organization, using lean methodology, like when, when we are treating uh, project management methodologies, we treated um, lean and C sigma. So lean and C sigma, more especially lean, is a very powerful business analysis technique as well as, as uh, uh, is, is a project management technique, but it's still a business analyst, analysis technique where you can use it to reduce waste within the organization. So if you can, um, uh, for instance, if you are going for an interview and the company is now asking you, um, how can you, what can you bring to them? Well, you can tell them that uh, as, a, as a business analyst, that you can help them to increase their return on investment through lean methodology. Uh, through lean methodology, you can reduce the waste of operation, waste of governance. And if you can, any, 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 any organization or any interviewer, you, you are telling the person that you, you can use lean to reduce the cost of operation, we know that you know what you are doing as a business analyst. As a business analyst, you can ensure project success by gathering accurate requirements, engage users, manage stakeholders' expectations, and manage changes of requirements. These are how, import, um, how important business analysis can be to the industries and to to specific um, organizations is a very powerful um, skill set and profession. So now we've been uh, speaking a lot of grammar, but for now, now because in in this uh, subject is not uh, so is not a, it's not all about grammar. Is a more is more of a practical um, oriented uh, subject or or profession. So we have to to look at it um, in a practical way now to see how it works. So we are going to look at this the the case study that will help us to understand how this uh, business analysis works. So now the case study is um, about uh, a real estate company. They manage this real estate company manages uh, a lot of uh, properties where they rent these properties to tenants and manage, um, maintain those properties, make sure they are, they, they, the facilities within the, 
the properties are working very well. But over time, the tenants have been complaining that once they make complain about uh, one issue or the other, that it takes longer time to resolve such complaints. And some of us here, more especially in the Western world, you know what it means that um, your boiler is not working. If your boiler is not working, your gas is not working, then this is a big issue, more especially during the winter, because you can't do anything. You need to heat the house. You need to, to bath. Everything you need to do revolves around boiler. So and when boiler become defective, it's like the whole house is uh, grounded. So, and when such a situation arises, and the company, the real estate company is not fixing it on time, is going to be a very big issue. So, and this is what this company is facing. So customers are complaining, it's taking longer time to resolve their issue. They have a defective boiler within the real estate company and Instead of taking like a few days to resolve or fix the boiler, it takes longer time. So what are the, um, this is the problem statement. This is what the company is facing. So as a business analyst, you are, present, you are presented with this uh, problem. So the first thing you need to do as a business analyst is to, you've understand their problem already. So. The first thing is to document the way they are handling this problem. That is the first thing. After having a session with the stakeholders, and now they, they are telling you this is um, this is when you gather the requirements on how to, to resolve this. The first thing you need to do is to gather the the current state of affairs. We call it ASIS, ASIS process or current state. So this is the current state on how this company has been dealing with this issue. And this, their current um, process is not working. And that's why the customers are complaining. So let's look at the current process. Now, here you can see, to do this, we use a um, swim lane um, process map or swim lane flow charts. This is, um, you can get this um, map done through draw.io or um, lucid charts or visio. So that's why I'm, I'm saying that this is, uh, you have to make uh, this uh, droid.io you a very, very good friend because you, you most of the time you'll be dealing with draw.io or lucid chart or if you have visu, but that is it. We are going to be dealing with that. We call it, we call this diagram unified modeling language. So that is the name given to it in business analysis. So you have to be doing a lot of diagram like this. So let's map out our assist process. So now the customer is here in the swim lane. This is swim customer's lane. Then this is the help desk of the uh, real estate. This is the lane. Then this is landlord, this is landlord's lane. Plumber or technician in the, um, in the real estate company, this is his own lane. The storeman, this is storeman's own lane. So let's see how um, this process takes place within the company. The first thing is that 
the customer identifies and reports incident, which is faulty boiler. You can see it here. The customer will report this uh, incident. And then, whom is the customer reporting this to? Help desk. Customer will pick a, 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 a phone and call the help desk and tell the help desk officer that the boiler in um, his or her apartment is faulty. So the, the help desk will receive and log the incident and then contact the landlord because they need to contact the landlord that they are managing their properties. So now the landlord will receive the call and review the, the incident. The landlord will then approve and then report back to the help desk that yes, you can go on and um, fix the boiler. Then the help desk will receive approval and notify the plumber. And then plumber here will receive uh, the notification, went on site visit to assess the faulty boiler. Then after assessing the faulty boiler, you will find out that it's, um, some part of the boiler has broken down and needs uh, a change or repair. So the, the plumber will then um, store. go to the store, meet the store and pick the spare part from the store and then go back and fix the faulty unit. And after fixing the faulty unit, you will test make sure that it's working. And once it's working, you report back to the uh, desk, um, help desk, and the help desk will then do a paperwork to make to, 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 um, that to be uh, documented and sent to the relevant department and then notify the customer that the boiler, the, the customer, that the um, plumber say that he finished the work. This is to confirm actually that the boiler is now working. And then the customer will confirm the incidence um, is fixed. And that will be the that will be the, the end of um, the, the process. So you see the process start from here and end here. And this is um, you take it. This takes a lot of time. That's why they are, they are complaining. So, as a business analyst, what do you do? Now they have invited you as a business. Now you, you the first thing you need to do. You have done your first job by gathering the requirements and then mapping out the documenting the this called uh, requirement documentation through process map. So this year you are looking at it is a call it process map. So you have gathered the requirements, document it, and then map it. So even if you are the chief executive is now calling you, what are you doing about this? You can present this report that actually this is what is happening. That's okay. You've uh, with, with a glance the 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 the, the the stakeholders have seen what is going on, that this is the way they are doing things for now and it's not working. So we need to work on this current process that is not working to make it work. And to do that, well, we are going to dive into what we call gap analysis. There is a gap in this process that is not making this process to work. Is either we need to add something or we need to remove something, but there is a gap in the process. So that is what we are going to do now. We need to identify the gap to make sure that we reduce the time. So 
and this brings us to uh, the gap analysis. So after looking at all these things, and we really need to get these things sorted out. So what do we do? We use lean approach to remove all the waste because there is a lot of waste of time here. As, um, so we need to find any way to reduce time it takes to do that. And to do that, we are looking at, um, is there a need to actually call a landlord for landlord to make a review? We, after looking at our whole process, it seems that this calling of landlord is a waste of time because actually landlord, we have, we have had an agreement with landlord, we are managing their proper. So we should have power authority to manage this property without all the time calling me any small thing we call landlord, any little thing we call. So you should be able to take, manage this property for the landlord without disturbing them. All they need is their, their money, their rent. So at the end of the day, if we, there is some expenses, we can just uh, let them know about the expenses, not uh, whenever anything happens, we'll call landlord. So we have identified that calling landlord or reporting to landlord is a waste of time. So that's why we're highlighting it in red color. Calling landlord is a waste. So we're looking at now landlord will call landlord, landlord will review, landlord will, landlord will go back to help desk before. So we are going to remove this. Maybe removing this, uh, we can save up to like um, maybe two days, which is enough. So the time we take landlord to do this and review and get back, might take like two days or more. So this is why we highlighted this. So in order to reduce time, we are looking at any avenue we can use to, to reduce time in this uh, process map. And that's what we are doing. So after doing that, then what do we do? We come to the future map that is to be. Now we have removed the landlord here. You can see this landlord swim lane is gone. In order to, re to to improve the process, we remove landlord from this picture. And that will reduce the time to fix this boiler. So immediately we the help desk receive a call. You just call the plumber immediately to go and fix the, the, the boiler. And the, 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 land, the, the, the plumber will just, after them pick a uh, paper from the store, go through fix and then notify the customer and then that's it. And that is how we reduce time. That's how we help this company to solve their problem by reducing the time it takes to, 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 make, to repair this uh, boiler and the, reduce the backlog within the system. So that is um, how business analysis works. So first you gather the requirement that exists, then you look at the, 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 the gap within the exists, and then you come up with um, a new requirement on how uh, a solution uh, will be to the um, to the organization. So this is uh, just, um, uh, there's more sophisticated approach you can, or you can use, but I decided because you are just stepping, you are, you are fit into business analysis. I mean, this is very simple. I'm just using this simple approach for you to have good understanding, but it might not be this simple. It might require more because uh, using more technologies and the rest of them um, to do your, your job as a business analyst it might be implementing a solution. If solution you might be implementing is might be adopting a software that can help the company or this um, uh, real estate company 
to manage incidents very well. Like um, service, there's a, the best incident management software now is uh, ServiceNow. So we can adopt ServiceNow to handle this situation. But now, for now, what we use here is a lean approach to, to solve this problem. So any question? You can see the, the business analysis is not uh, is not so difficult the way you might be thinking. Yeah. So, so that is the business, that is the case study. So if you don't have any question, we crack on. Then now we have painted a picture, we have seen how business analysis works in real world, how you can, like now you've got a job, uh, assigned as a business to work in this company. If you use this approach, you've actually done something for the organization, because you have saved them some days and that's very fantastic. So now we've seen, uh, <coughs> um, <coughs> have a picture, or how it works. Now let's look at uh, rules in business analysis. Hello, sir. Hello, sorry. Good evening, sir. Okay, I'll be asking you a question. You don't want so, to. So I want to ask a question. Sorry, I've been having some little challenges. I'm trying to fix. Okay. Um, on the on the chat, um, I see the removal of um, the the landlord uh, process out of it. Yes. Now, um, for a typical, for instance, um, the sector where I actually work, mm. um, this actually you know, comes to mind where we try to come up with um, processes and ideas that can actually make the customer journey almost seamless. Now, also, um, I know there has to be some levels of controls, checks and balances, which I don't really see in this process. Let's take for instance, at the point where the um, customer actually makes that log to the help desk, mm -hmm. what controls and checks do we actually have to put in place to ensure that instead of passing through the landlord and we are going straight to the plumber to actually pick those items to be sure that um, the plumber is actually um, doing the right thing by ensuring that there was actually a problem that requires a complete change before he approaches the store. So mm -hmm. are, are there some checks and balances um, that could be introduced or that are embedded from this point where that incident is logged to the place where um, the plumber goes to pick the item. I'm very I'm, I know that what we are trying to do is to make the process simpler and also to be able to beat time yes. of resolution. So that's just what I, I want to clarify here. Thank you. Yeah, as a business analyst, when you are doing all this analysis, you are not doing it in isolation. You work with the stakeholders. You know, they, you, this, this um, waste you've removed here cannot work until it's get validated, you know? So for you to remove like landlord here within the picture, it must be validated. It must be agreed that landlord has to be removed. And again, for plumbers, for, 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 plumber, for the company to have checks and balances to make sure that the plumbers are doing their work or that, that um, there is no scam within the system, the company need to find a way to do that. They must find a way to make sure there is checks and balances. And um, 
uh, just like uh, when uh, the, 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 the help desk received this um, complaint, it gets documented, it gets logged somewhere in the system depending on the kind of software they are using to log their incidents. Just like I was saying that the best solution to use is like these days, but you have so many incidents, uh, response uh, softwares or logs where you can log and then track what is going on. But when you, you um, employ someone, you must have a level of trust by giving the person some con uh, some um, some uh, permission to do some of some jobs. Now the, the plumber, after receiving this, thing, the plumber will report back. The plumber will have to do his own paperwork and do some logging. You know, like here. In, in my house, some of the, 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 the plumbers that come here to fix things, after fixing it, they have a software where actually I will sign for them that they've done their job. These are some of the um, um, let me say authentication that they've actually done something because there's no way plumber can uh, conspire with the landlord, I mean, with the tenant and the store man at the same, at the same time to default or uh, defraud the company. So these are some of the checks and balances. So the, 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 the customer confirming that the landlord, the, 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 the the, the plumber have done his job is, is like a check showing that you've gone there to do some work. And going to the store, the store man have his own job. When, when, when some of these, uh, this thing is, um, the store man need to equally log what the, 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 the plumber come to pick. And when during the, the time of um, reconciliation, it will be reconciled that a particular equipment is used to service this particular apartment. And these are the checks. But as a business analyst, our, 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 our situation here is uh, not about that particular checks and balances. This is, comp this is for company to, to do their checks and balances. Our own is to make sure that we find a solution to reduce, uh, to solve this problem of um, uh, taking longer time in fixing a defective boiler and uh, re reducing the backlogs within the system. So is either we use lean to reduce the amount of time it takes because all this time we can see is waste, or we use a solution like um, a solution like um, service now to reduce um, the time. Service now is 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 is, uh, is very costly to implement. So if, for instance, if the company that doesn't have money to implement service now, now they can use this uh, simple, simple lean approach to start, to start uh, solving their problem till when they are ready to implement a sophisticated solution to do that for them. But the main thing here is that we, we've already started solving the problems by trying to remove the unwanted process a process that doesn't add value within um, within the the supply chain.
I don't think um uh, uh, I don't know if I'm um, if I'm making sense. Very well, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So the 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 what we are doing here, we are just uh, trying to pick paint picture on how you as a business analyst can solve problems within organization. So even if they don't have money to start implementing solution, you can use this uh, simple lean approach to solve their, their, their this thing. And that's what makes you a very powerful business analyst. You don't just need uh, um, to start only technology or software in order to add value to their system. You can look at what they are doing and make a recommendation that will save them um, time and money. And this is, um, you know, adding a, is a return on investment because you are saving them a lot of time already. So even if he's now taking, um, taking this uh, uh, process like uh, five days to solve this problem, he's now going to take like three days or two days to solve this problem. And then the rest, two days can be taken to solve another problem, which is uh, quite awesome. So now we move back to rules in business analysis. And then we have, um, we are going to look at it this way who is a business analyst, categories of business analyst, job title of a business analyst, position of business analyst in an organization. Who is a business analyst? Business analysts are responsible for discovering, synthesizing, and analyzing information from a variety of sources within an enterprise, including tools, processes, documentation, and stakeholders. The business analyst is responsible for eliciting the actual need of the stakeholders, which frequently involves investigating and clarifying their expressed desire in order to determine underlying issues and causes. So that is uh, uh, whom business analyst is. In a, in, a, in a more simpler language, you are the one that um, gather requirements, um, document requirements, analyze requirements, and make recommendation for the stakeholders. That is one, what business analyst does. Once you come to the organization, the first thing you gather requirements, you, when you talk about eliciting or elicitation, elicitation means uh, gathering requirement. When you say re requirement elicitation, it means requirement gathering. So you gather requirements from stakeholders, you analyze it, and then after analyzing it, you come up with a solution. And that solution, you recommend that solution to the stakeholders. And once they adopt the solution, then you implement the solution. You implement the solution because you that recommend the solution will have to design the solution and implement the solution. So when they are, they are, the, the solution is getting implemented, you are going to be there to make sure that um, you carry out various tests, make sure that what they are doing, the developers are doing, uh, is what uh, is in line with their own specification as a business analyst. So the activities that business analysts perform include understanding enterprise problems and goals, analyzing needs and solutions, devising strategies, driving change, and facilitating 
uh, stakeholder collaboration. So that is what you do as a business analyst. Do you have any question on this uh, particular topic? Okay, we we'll move. Categories of business analysts. We have two categories of business analysts. You know, like if you are searching for a job of a business analyst, you might be seeing technical BA required, business BA required. You might get confused. What is technical BA? What is business BA? Yeah, there is two categories. Business, business analysts are responsible for the research, feasibility, justification, and analysis of the requirement for a given project. So this is what the business BA does. Once there is a problem, in an organization and they are, they are now they're invited as a business and nobody knows what is happening. It's a fresh issue, fresh situation. Now they've invited you as a business analyst. It's your duty to carry out research as a business analyst. When you carry out research, you find out what is happening. When you find out the, the, the problem, you analyze the problem to find solution. And when you find solution, then you recommend solution for the company. Once they adopt your solution through business case, then it's now the time to design the solution and implement it. And that is when technical BA steps in. So it's the duty of the business analyst to, to initiate a, a, a process, a project, analyze, finding, uh, doing the initial requirement gathering, doing requirement analysis, doing solution evaluation, and then come up with a business case. And after the business case, that is where the job of a business, business analyst ends. And then technical BA will take it up from there to start designing the solution. Actually, one BA, you can do all these things, but it's a stage. These are stages. And well, well, why is this way? Why we are trying to categorize it this way is that if you go to the, to the labor market, you find out that companies, they are specializing some BAs on to just be their business BA. That is just their job. Doing this um, research and the feasibility, feasibility studies and the requirement analysis. And some are specialized in, specializes in um, designing, defining the, the, the solution and implementing the solution. But one business analyst can actually do all these things. As a business analyst, you should be able to, to do the job of uh, a business BA and technical BA. Technical business analysts are responsible for utilizing techniques, methods, tools, skills to transfer business requirements into technical requirements. So when these business analysts provide business requirements, because you find out business, um, the, the business BA will find out the business solution. And to find out this business solution, you generate business requirements. Then once you, you come up with this business requirements, now you know it's a solution. Somebody need to break that uh, business requirement down into technical requirements so that the developers can consume that technical requirement because developers cannot consume business requirements. 
developers do not, do not understand the language of business requirement. So that is why is the, the business analyst will then, the technical business analyst will take business requirements and then transfer it to technical requirements. And what are these technical requirements? Technical requirements are you, um, user stories. The language the developers understand the, they are user stories. User stories are piece of software. We we'll, we we'll talk a bit about that uh, during uh, project uh, management. So these are two uh, categories of business analysts. Let's look at. Um, Uh, business analysts, uh, business BA, their deliverables and their techniques. Business BA deliverables are project brief, business case, project charter, cost through financial derivation, business requirement document, Benefits realization document, prioritize requirement, assess and to be processed design, and the policy management document. So these are the, the documents or deliverables that you need to produce as, or you need to work with or to work on as a, as a business. BA. Project brief is a project mandate that states the problem, kind of problem statement. It's a problem statement. And it, it, it gives you the details of what the company requires. It details the problem the company is having. At that point, they can provide the budget and the and the timeline they are they, they want to uh, they want the projects um the timeline they want for the projects that's um what a project um, a brief contains and then business case is a document it's a one page document it's not a one page document anyway but it's a document where you analyze the, 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 the problem, you analyze the business, um, the, the requirements, uh, and the as is requirement and to be requirements, and then the high level requirements, and then solution evaluation, and then recommendation. That is what is contained in business case. We are going to treat all these documents one after the other. Then project charter. We treated project charter in business, uh, in uh, project management. It's a one page document that summarizes everything about the project and then the authorization of the project. We've seen project charter, I lose. Then cost and the benefit derivation or uh, the cost of financial derivation. These are like uh, the budget, financial forecast for the for the for the project. So you need to understand how much it takes to deliver such a um, uh, project or solution you are planning to to deliver. Then business requirement. Business requirement are the actual requirements that you need to solve that uh, business problem. So if, for instance, um, if it's um, maybe it, the company is now trying to adopt um, e-commerce software in order to, maybe they want their, their, their company to, to keep on, for instance, is a retail store that want to adopt e-commerce solution. That e-commerce, 
solution or software or website or app can become the, the business um, solution. So the business requirement is going to be the requirements that it, uh, what it requires to implement that um, e-commerce solution. So, so it's going to be the documentation. So then benefit realization document, there is going to be the benefit you are going to realize from deploying one solution or solving that problem. How is it going to increase the company revenue? How is it uh, going to um, increase sales? How is it going to increase the customer's loyalty? These are some of the benefits you need to document. Uh, you need that document. Or you, all these things can equally be documented within business case anyway. Then prioritize requirements. After documenting your requirement, your business requirement, you need to be prioritized using Moscow analysis. Then assist and to be process design, just like we've seen in the in the in the um, what they call, um the case studies. So, and then policy management document. So these are some of the, uh, you need to understand the company management document to make sure that their policy management document, whichever solution you are deploying is in line with the uh, policy management, company management, you know, to make sure you're not breaching any other you are not why why trying to solve um, a problem for the company you are not breaching another uh, another um, another rule such as uh, gdpr so you need to make sure such documents you need to to look at all of them make sure that they are in line within the your solution is in line within the company's management uh, uh policy documentation so these are the the, the deliverables a business business analyst need to do or need to deal with in order to do his or her job very well and the techniques that um he need to do he need to use in order to achieve all these things uh, we have a person. Person will help you to analyze their stakeholders very well. We call it personal analysis. We are going to look at them uh, in details when we are going to treat uh, uh, business analysis techniques. Then most is going to be um, the. The, the 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 analysis you, you need to uh, uh, use to document your requirement, making sure your requirement is uh, documented within the, the easiest way that can be understood by everyone within the uh, organization. That is not ambiguous. It's going to be simple. As simple as simple as it could it could be, and uh, SWOT is a, a document or techniques we need to use to look at the strengths, the weakness of the solution. So we call it SWOT analysis. We are going to look at it within the uh, requirement um, business analysis techniques. And we have a requirement gathering uh, techniques. We are equally going to look at that, how to, to do requirement gathering, that is requirement elicitation, quantitative analysis, that is a requirement analysis. You have a quantitative analysis, 
and um, uh, qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis. These are all about uh, requirement analysis. There are so many requirement analysis techniques we are going to look at, like um, a fishbone diagram, cause and effect, root cause analysis, gap analysis. These are some of the techniques that contain within this quantitative and the qualitative analysis. Then projects benefits, that is value proposition. Then we have a Moscow analysis. These are the techniques we are going to use for prioritizing our requirements. Then we have a CIS to be process mapping. We're still going to do look at that process map. We've seen how it works, but we're going to look at, at it in details. And then data analysis. Data analysis means um, looking at a high level requirement of data and how we can use data to solve problems. So these are some of the techniques we are going to look into in as in a uh, business business analysis. So that is it for business business analysis. So some of all these deliverables and techniques are documents and we are going to look at it in details for you to see the document and understand how it works. So we are not going to dive in details in um, you know, dive into all these um, documentations and the uh, deliverables and the uh, techniques in details here. You have um, this is a full topic on its own. Then the next thing is to look at um, technical BA. They are deliverables and uh, techniques. When you come to um, technical business analysis or business analysis, these are their deliverables. They use, uh, use, uh, use cases. Uh, use cases, we have a use case, use cases diagram. And that's what we use. Like use cases is a scenario based analysis where you, you create how a user can use a particular solution. To have mockups, mockups is just like a, 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 a design, how a solution is going to look like in a design. And again, wireframes, wireframes and mockups are just the, almost the same thing, but wireframe is more of a skeletal overview of a, a solution. Then persona, uh, like um, the, 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 the personification in, so, in some of the, um, the people that will be represented within the use cases. Then we have um, test cases. Test cases are going to be um, after every you uh, after every user story, you create a test case, a test case that will make sure that uh, that particular user story after the development and te and um, testing that the user story conforms with the acceptance criteria. It means the, it, that the user story meets the acceptance criteria. So you need to create, for every user story, you need to create a test case. The test case is that whenever you create a piece of software or a functionality, you need to test it. 
So there must be a benchmark. So you need to create a test, a benchmark that will make that to will be 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 as a benchmark, a, a test that will be as, serve as a benchmark to make sure that that user story meets the the acceptance criteria, and then test scripts. Test scripts is when we are writing those test cases. Then data flow diagrams. Data flow diagrams is just like a process mapping. So it's the same thing with process mapping. That does a, the diagram to show how uh, information flows or how process flows. Then how swim lane. Swim lane, we've seen how swim lane works within the um, the diagram that we use for our uh, case study. Swim lane shows uh, departments or units within a process or within the organization, how information moves from one department to another department or from one unit to another unit during process flow or, or, or process charts. Then we have a user journey. User journey here, uh, at times we look at um, customers, their user journey. They are when we're looking at uh, customer journey to make, to understand our customers, maybe their pain points, the way they interact with our with our product or within our, our website or whatever we have that's where we create a user journey how the user of a particular software how they interact with that particular software so before you create any software you need to create the user journey you need to identify all the users within that software that is one of your duties as a technical business analyst. So that everybody will know who is going to use that, uh, that software and where and how they are going to use it. You need to provide all these things in the diagram before actually you can start developing that software. Process map, we've already seen process map within the um our case study process map is how you map process from one uh, process flow from one stage to another to be complete you complete a particular process and then data mapping is how data moves just like process map is now is a is data how data moves from either one software to another software in order to complete its uh, journey. So these are the deliverables within technical BA. It's some of the things technical BA. So it's more, we call it technical BA, technical BA because here there is more, is most of the things deliverable here are technical. Most of them are diagrams drawing using um uh tools like uh, visio uh, draw.io and lucid child uh, lucid chart and using a um uh, unified modeling language so they are more technical than the business uh ba that's why we call it technical ba so and the techniques is, um, like I said, is UML, Unified Modeling Language, call it behavioral diagram. And the uh, requirements, engineering, data analysis, and test driving development. So these are the techniques um, used mainly in uh, a technical BAs. 
we will have time to go through all these very well. And these are what we are going to be dealing with. Even within our work experience, we are going to be designing use cases, wireframe, and the rest of them. But it doesn't mean that uh, you must do all these things in every project. But in every project, at least, you must do one or two or three of these deliverables as a business analyst. In some projects, you might not do it. So you might not do one, but in some project like in the, in the project we are going to be doing, I'm sure we are going to have a, a use cases. We are going to use a wireframe. We are going to use test cases and test scripts. We are going to use swim lane. And uh, we are going to use process mapping. So these are some of the things we are going to use during our, our work. Uh, internship. So, but in totality, if you are doing your job, you must come across one of these deliverables while doing your job as a technical BA. So, <clears throat> any questions for now? Okay, now we are going to look at job titles of a business analyst. As a business analyst, you might, you might be uh, called so many job titles. So if you see any of these job titles within the market or within the industry, then you should know that they are referring to you or they are referring to a business analyst. It's the same thing. So when you hear a business architect, it's the same thing as business analyst. When you see business system analyst, is the same thing as the business analyst, just that they are more aligned to one or more um, professionalized in that particular area, but they all, in general, they all business analysts. For instance, data analysis. Data analysis is a business analyst. But now they are now looking at that. Some people might see data analysts as they are not business analysts, but data analysts is a business analyst. Just that is more um, specialized in data aspect of a business. Enterprise analyst is still a business analyst. Management consultant is a business analyst. Process analyst is a business analyst. Product manager is a business analyst. Product owner is a business analyst. Requirement engineer, you are a business analyst. System analyst, you are a business analyst. So these are all these, uh, all these names, we are all business analysts. So once you are a, you, you are a business analyst, you can work within these rules. You know that some rules will be more, um, you have to um, do more training. Like if you need to work as a data analyst, you need to do more training on data, like a data modeling, data visualization, and uh, areas of data like uh, using like some softwares like uh, Power BI, Tableau, uh, more on Excel and the rest of them, data mapping and the rest of them. But still you are a business analyst.
Any question on the job title of a business analyst? Okay, we'll move. Now let's see how business analyst fits in an organization. Uh, looking at this um, organizational chart. From the director, from the program director down, you see you have uh, a program manager. And then from program manager down, you can see you have a head of project. We have a PMO analyst manager. We have a head of business change. We have a head of communication. We have a head of marketing and the testing manager. Now, on that head of projects, we have project manager one. We have a project manager two, and then we have a project coordinator or project support officer. That's the hierarchy. Then under PMO analyst manager, we have a PMO analyst. One, we have a PMO analyst two and have PMO analyst three. Then under head of business change, business change, because a business analyst is, a, is a, the under change, change management. You are there to bring change and find solution. That's where we, we, a business analyst comes under um, business analyst one, business analyst two, and business analyst three. So, so business analyst comes in under change, change department, head of change or change unit or change management. So that is where a business analyst, how you are fitting in the organization. And business analysts, they are in the same level or same capacity as a project manager. Although when you come to a project, the project manager is in charge because he's, uh, he directs the project. But in terms of the way they are weighed, business ma uh, pro uh, project manager and business analyst, they are in the same or in the same capacity. Now, I will look at a um, list of stakeholders in business analysis. So these are the stakeholders uh, that makes up uh, business analysis. So the first stakeholder here is a business analyst. Business analyst is responsible and accountable for execution of uh, these activities, which is business analysis. Then we have customer. Customer uses or may use products or services produced by the enterprise. So a customer is person that uses the product or services uh, produced by the enterprise. So he's a, he's a stakeholder when we are, we, are, we are working as a business analyst because if you are working within agile environments, you need to, to understand the customer's need as a business analyst in order to, to provide solution. Even looking at the the, the the case studies we handled, you can see we, the, we, we walk through the customer's uh, pain point, customer is struggling. And 
that's what uh, they brought you in as a business analyst to solve the problem. So you must understand customer very well in order to know how to the the the, the solution that you need to to produce to solve customers' problem and uh, make them happy. Then you have a domain expert. Here, domain expert means subject matter expert. Domain subject matter expert is an individual with in-depth knowledge of a topic relevant to the business need or solution scope. So if, when you come to an organization, you have some people that are domain experts. Some people might be working within that particular domain for a long time, so they understand the way that domain area works. So, for instance, if you are trying to implement a solution within HR department, uh, the head of HR or somebody working within that HR is a domain subject matter expert. So if you want to understand how each how a human resource department was, or to understand the current um, the current uh, solution they are using, for instance, like um, SAP Success Factor, or uh, yeah, is a, a very popular solution within um hr if you need to understand that the person you need to approach during your requirement gathering is the subject matter expert within that hr which might be the head of uh, hr or a senior officer within that uh, uh, hr so that's the person called subject matter because you have uh, more in-depth knowledge of that particular area or that solution. Then another end user, another uh, stakeholder here is an end user. End user uh, stakeholder who directly interact with the solution. So end user here can be somebody within the organization that using that solution on daily basis to do his or her job. So if you are working with um, to implement um, or to update uh, CRM in an organization like customers relationship management, you're trying to either install a new CRM or to upgrade, you need somebody that is already using the existing one which is the end user. So you might look at the, the, the marketers or the sales representatives that will be using customers' uh, relationship uh, management software to manage their customers' sales report, customer a kind of lead and the rest of them. They are the person using it on daily basis. So these are the end users. They have good knowledge of that. And while try to de de develop a solution within that, you need to incorporate them. You need to carry them along. They need to be in the picture because they are the people that are going to be using it. So if you are trying to do your change management, these are the people that you need to carry along. If you are installing a new system, these are the people you need to carry along. These are the people you need to sensitize. These are the people you need to train for them to know how to use the new system we are planning to uh, implement or the new system we've just implemented. So you need to work with them. So if you, when we are doing our stakeholder analysis during project management, you can see we have such people, end users, where they don't have power but they have high interest in the solution because they are the people that are going to be using that solution. So another one 
here is uh, implementation subject matter expert. An implementation subject matter expert is a stakeholder who has specialized knowledge regarding the implementation of one or more solution components. So now, if you are implementing a solution, we have two types of subject matter, subject matter experts here. One is domain subject matter expert, and the other one is implementation sub subject matter expert. So the domain subject matter expert are the people working in the organization who know, have uh, expert knowledge about that particular solution. But when we talk about the implementation subject matter expert, these are the vendors that have been helping companies to implement the solution. For instance, um, when I was implementing um, a solution for Telefonica, I plan for a solution within Telefonica. I, I have two um, subject matter experts. The implementation subject matter expert here within SAP Success Factor are the essential, the essential professionals. These are the people that uh, implemented that solution. They are the technical partners of um, Telefonica that help them to implement the solution. And we are trying to upgrade that system by automating most of the activities through robotic process automation. So what we do is that we have to last, no, I have to last with this uh, essential uh, professionals, the technical, to understand more about that because they have the documentation to understand more about that particular um, uh, solution and to understand how possible it is to automate some of the activities regarding data flow within that solution. So they had implementation and the domain subject patterns are the head of uh, personnel department and the rest, these are the those that have been working within directly within the organization using that solution. So that is uh, the difference between uh, domain subject matter expert and implementation subject matter expert. They are two different people. So the other one are those working in the organization and the other one are the technical partners helping the company to implement that solution. So you are a business analyst, you work with all of them. Then other stakeholders are operational support. Operational support is responsible for the day-to-day -day management and maintenance of the system or product. So they are the operational support within the organization. So any, any of all these people that are um, within the day-to-day -day management within the organization, you need to work with them as well if you're implementing a, 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 a solution or working on a project um, like that. Then you have project manager. Project manager are responsible for managing the work required to deliver a solution that meet a business need while managing the scope, budget, shadow resources, quality, and risk. So these are project manager is part of the, the business analysis uh, stakeholders. Then you have regulators. If you are managing a, any project you are working on a solution, they are, you must have some people that are regulating either how that solution works or activities surrounding that solution. For instance, as a, a data analyst, which is still a business analyst, you are working on data within an organization, then you need to understand which body that is regulating the data management. Or you need to understand the regulations 
that is regulating the data management. The one of the most important regulation that governs data management today is the GDPR. So these are the regulators. You need to understand. You need to understand them in order to comply with the regulation. Then another one important or a very big stakeholder within business analysis is the sponsor. Sponsors are responsible for initiating the effort to define a business need and develop a solution that meet that need. They authorize the work to be performed and control the budget and scope for the initiative. So they are the, they are the big man within the a business analysis because they initiate the projects we are working on. It's out of their initiation, out of their activity that the, the, the business, um, the project uh, uh, came about. So they, they, they are the sponsor. They control every aspect of the, the project. Then we have suppliers. The supplier is a stakeholder outside the boundary of a given organization. Suppliers here can be vendors. For instance, in your organization, if you are working um, with Zenith Bank, and uh, Zenith Bank is now trying to install um, Microsoft Dynamics in their, in their organization, they have to look for Microsoft as the vendor. So Microsoft here can be the vendor. They are the supplier. You know, they are the suppliers of uh, this uh, particular solution. So they are stakeholders, although they are not within the organization because, because they are the people supplying this solution. And most of the time, some of this solution they supply to the organization is not a one-off sell. It might be on sub subscription. So you find out that you have to be dealing with them on, on periodic basis. So they become supply, they become stakeholders. If anything goes wrong, they need to know because if, if, if it's like a, a SaaS software, like software as a service, which is uh, on the cloud, working on the cloud, like software, like most of this software is on the cloud. So you have to work with them because you are, it's not a one-off buy. If they not a, you don't buy it and that's it. So you subscribe and you keep on working with them as long as you use that particular uh, softwares of theirs. Then we have tester. Tester are responsible for determining how to verify that solution meets the requirement defined by the business analyst, as well as conducting the verification process. As a business analyst, you can be a tester, you know, but some organization, they tend to have a separate tester from what you business analysts, so they test what you are doing, you know, kind of creating checks and balances. Because as a business owner, you are the person that created everything. You test every good. At times there might not be cadet um, uh, checks and balances. So at times they create testers or QA quality assurance uh, analysts to to have. Um, uh, these uh, checks and balances within the, the, the project. Testers also, testers also seek to ensure that the solution meets applicable quality standard and that the risk of defect or failure is understood and uh, minimized. So, these are the list of stakeholders 
that we are going to be working with as a business analyst. So at times we might have more, but this is uh, the only person we, know, we don't have here uh, is uh, developers. Yeah, I'll add developer to this list later. We don't have developers, but they will, as a business owner, you will need to you will have developers. You need to work with developers as well. But like the um, technical implementation subject matter expert, they can work as developers most of the time because they are the implementation. So yeah, they can work as it, as developers. That's what they do. Any question? Okay. Let's take one more topic and uh, we can call it a night. Then let's look at business analysis skills. These are the core skills you need to have as a as a business analyst. These are when we talk about skills, we, we talk about uh, soft skills. As a business analyst, you need to have analytical thinking and problem solving thinking. Uh, this uh, analytical and problem solving thinking, they are creative thinking, decision making, learning, problem solving, system thinking, conceptual thinking, and visual thinking. So, all these uh, skill sets is what. Uh, comprises of analytical thinking and problem solving thinking. And have a behavioral characteristics. And these are ethics, personal accountability, trustworthiness, organization and time, management and adaptability. Then we'll come to business knowledge. You must have a business acumen. You must have industrial knowledge. You must have organizational knowledge. You must have solution knowledge. And you must have methodology knowledge. So these are the, uh, the business knowledge you need to have it as a business analyst. So business acumen is that understanding business very well. That's business, how business works, business analysis, business um, logics, business ethics. This is what we mean by business acumen. Then industrial knowledge, you must on understand how industries work. You must understand like so many industries, how they are, work very well, like is the banking, is banking sectors. That's why in, in your CV, you need to state, you need to uh, state your industrial knowledge. Like uh, if, you are, if you work within the banking environment, work in telecommunication, you are CV, you need to state your knowledge like, just like I, uh, um, telecommunication, banking, health sector, um, transport and logistics. Um, these are some of the industries. So you need to specify and you need to have a, a good knowledge of how that industry works. The company is, uh, they want to understand the industrial knowledge. Not just um, not just uh, um, theoretical knowledge, but commercial knowledge. Commercial knowledge means that you have worked within that industry. 
Then organizational knowledge. You must know how organization works. The organization you are trying to, to work, you must uh, need to understand the way the organization works or general organization knowledge, organizational structure. Then solution knowledge. You are here to deploy solution. You must understand that solution very well. You must have known how to deploy that solution. So if you are if you are trying to deploy, for instance, let me use e-commerce solution, you must understand that solution knowledge. You, like in e-commerce, you have um, a Shopify, we have um, WooCommerce, we have uh, big commerce, we have um, SAP cloud commerce, we have um, Salesforce commerce. So all this, the all these solution, you must understand how all these solutions work, and uh, the, it's very good to understand it. So the the company need to understand that you know this solution very well. But you over time when you start working as a business over time you, you have to build knowledge over these solutions but as a junior business analyst you might not, you might not have uh, problems you know you just uh, knowing full solution few solution and how it works is enough but like a senior business analyst you need to understand um all these things very well methodology knowledge you need to understand uh methodologies in solving problems as a business and like agile methodology six sigma lane methodology waterfall and the rest of them so you need to have good knowledge of all these more especially commercial knowledge. So that's why this training we are trying to provide um, some commercial knowledge that will help you kickstart your career. That's what this uh, uh, work experience or internship is all about, to provide you with this uh, uh, knowledge. Then communication skill. When we talk about communication skills, talk about verbal communication, non-verbal communication, written communication, and the listening communication. So verbal communication is about speaking very well. When you speak, people understand you and you understand people. That's the communication. When I'm speaking, it doesn't matter if I'm speaking Dutch, um, Queen's English, and you that I'm talking to is not understanding my English, actually I'm not communicating. But if I'm using uh, Pidgin English, and both of us are understanding ourselves very well, that's a very good communication. So communication is not about how beautiful your English is, it's about how both of you understand each other. Verbal, non-verbal communication is uh, body language, trying to use body language to communicate. Uh, written communication is about how to document your, your processes uh, very well. That's written communication. As a business owner, you must know how to document your requirements so that both the um both in technicals and in non-technical terms so those with non-technical uh, ability can understand it and those with technical can still understand it and listening communication here means that as a business analyst you need to be a good listener when you are facilitating um, a workshop 
you need to listen when you ask questions or when you're interviewing the stakeholders, you don't interrupt them. When they are talking, or when they are making contribution or impulse, you don't interrupt them. Allow them to flow. Be more of a good listener. That's a good, that's a, a good uh, a quality of a, a business analyst. Then interaction skills. You need to know how to interact very well because as a business analyst, you, you are a researcher. Researcher, you need to be gathering requirements, you need to be interviewing a lot of people. So with that, you need to know how to interact with people and that means facilitation, leadership and influencing, teamwork, negotiation, uh, stroke uh, conflict resolution, teaching. So this means uh, these are interaction, interacting with people. So as a business analyst, these are the things you need to do. You need to be a good um, a team member. You need to work effectively in a team. You need to be able to influence very well. You know, you need to to be a good teacher. You need to teach because. When you develop a solution, you need to train people on how to use that solution. That's teaching. So the next thing, next skills here, which is very, very important skills, are tools and technologies. As a business analyst, you need to know how to use a variety of of tools within the industry, such as uh, office uh, productivity tools and technologies, business analysis tools and technologies, communication tools and technologies. Office productivity tools are tools like uh, Office 365, like Microsoft, um, uh, Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint. These are office uh, productivity tools and technologies. And business analysis tools and technologies. We are talking about like Microsoft Visio. We are talking about Draw.io. We are talking about uh, Lucid Chat. And we are talking about communication tools and technology. We are talking about we're talking about Zoom, go to meeting, base camp, and uh, the rest of them. These are the tools you need to know how to use very well as a business analyst. So, and if you have any question, you can bring your question up now. Any question here? Okay. If you don't um, have question, then we are going to stop here for tonight. And uh, we are going to continue next tomorrow. We will be having class tomorrow. Oh, OK.
Okay, if you don't have any questions, um, I will say good night to you all and uh, I will upload the video for you to come and watch later. Well, we are progressing and uh, it's, it's, it's a bit, business analysis is a bit um, technical, but it's a, it's a very rewarding profession. So I wish you a good night rest. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Good night.